Did your electronic stability control warning light just pop up on your dashboard? You might also know it as the electronic stability program or dynamic stability control. Different names, same system. And now you're probably wondering, how do I reset it? Well, you're in the right place. Because in this video, I'm going to walk you through exactly how to fix and reset your electronic stability control system, step by step. But before we get into the reset procedure, let's take a quick look at how the system actually works. Because understanding it will make the fix a whole lot easier. So, what exactly does this system do? The Electronic Stability Control, or ESC for short, is also called the Electronic Stability Program or Dynamic Stability Control. It just depends on the manufacturer. Think of it as your car's built-in safety assistant, quietly watching over you every second you're behind the wheel. While you're driving, it's constantly paying attention to how much you're turning the steering wheel, how fast each wheel is spinning, and even how the car is rotating, what's known as the yaw rate. If it senses something's off, like you're starting to skid, the car isn't turning as much as you're steering, you're oversteering, or there's even a risk of rolling over, it jumps into action right away. The way it works is pretty clever. By braking specific wheels, it can pull the car back in line and help prevent or reduce skidding, especially when the road is wet or slippery. Some advanced versions can even nudge the steering to help guide you back onto the path you intended to take. It's an amazing bit of technology. But, like anything electronic, it's not immune to glitches. Sometimes that warning light pops up simply because a sensor is dirty, slightly out of alignment, or there's a minor electrical hiccup. All right, now that we know how the system works, let's talk about how you can troubleshoot and reset that warning light. The first thing you should look at is the ABS sensor, or the ABS ring. Since the electronic stability control system works hand-in-hand -hand with your ABS, it actually relies on the ABS sensor's signal to operate. Here's something important to remember. If the ESC light is blinking while you're driving on a slippery road, that usually means the system is doing its job. But if that light stays on constantly, that's a sign something's not working as it should. One of the most common issues is dirt. The ABS sensor or ring can easily get covered in mud, dust, or road grime. And sometimes it's not just dirt. It could be damaged to the sensor or the ring itself. That's why it's worth taking a few minutes to inspect them closely. If you spot any dirt or debris on the sensor, wipe it clean so it's spotless. Once it's clean, restart your car and take a look at your dashboard. In many cases, just cleaning that sensor is all it takes to get rid of the warning light. You can also make the whole process a lot easier by using an OBD2 scanner. Just plug it in and it'll tell you exactly which ABS sensor isn't working by showing you the specific trouble code for that sensor. And it's not just the ABS sensors. If there's any other sensor acting up and triggering that ESC warning light, the scanner will pick that up too. If you don't have a scanner yet, check out the link in the description. I've listed some of the best and most affordable ones you can get. Once you plug it into your car's OBD2 port, it'll read any trouble codes stored in the system. For example, you might see codes like C0035, C0040, C0045, or C0050. Those all mean there's a wheel speed sensor circuit malfunction, and the last digit tells you which wheel it is. Another one you might see is C007A, which points to a steering angle sensor issue. Then there's C1440, which means a yaw rate sensor circuit malfunction, and C1441, which is for a lateral acceleration sensor problem. You might even get P0500, which is a vehicle speed sensor malfunction, and ESC relies on speed data to work properly. If you're not sure about what these OBD2 codes mean, you can always visit our website, obdcode.org, where we've got a full list of codes and their explanations. Now, if the ABS sensor checks out fine, but that ESC warning light is still staring at you, don't worry. There's another simple thing you can try. Take a look at your steering wheel or the dashboard area. You should see a button that controls the electronic stability control system. 
It's often marked with a little car icon, sometimes with wavy lines underneath. All you have to do is press and hold that button for a few seconds. Keep holding it, and in a moment, you should see the ESC warning light disappear from your dashboard. That means the system has reset and you're good to go. But just keep in mind, this trick only works if there isn't a serious problem in the system. If the light keeps coming back after a reset, there's probably a deeper issue that needs to be checked out. If you found this video helpful and want to see more guides on how to reset dashboard warning lights and fix common car issues, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your fellow car enthusiasts. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss an update when we drop a new video. All right, if the light still won't go away, it might be time to give your car a simple reset. One of the easiest ways to do this is by unplugging the battery. Just pop the hood and disconnect the negative terminal of the battery. Wait for about two to three minutes. This gives the vehicle's electronics enough time to fully power down. Then reconnect the battery terminal, tighten it up, and start your vehicle again. If the issue was caused by a minor glitch or a software hiccup, this quick reset can often clear the warning light and get the system back to normal. If that warning light is still hanging around, the next thing to check is your fuse box, specifically the fuse for the electronic stability control. You'll usually find the fuse box either under the dashboard or in the engine bay. Once you locate it, look for a fuse labeled something like ESC, ESP, or Dynamic Stability Control. If you're not sure which one it is, your owner's manual will point you in the right direction. Carefully pull out that fuse and take a close look. If it looks burnt or the metal strip inside is broken, that means it's blown and needs to be replaced. Just pop in a new fuse with the exact same amperage rating. After that, go ahead and disconnect your car battery for a couple of minutes, just like in the earlier step. Once you reconnect it and start the car, the system should reset itself, and hopefully, that warning light will be gone for good. If the light is still on after checking the fuse, the next thing you'll want to look at is the throttle valve actuator. This component is basically in charge of controlling your engine's power, and if it's not working right, it can definitely trigger the ESC warning light. Pop open the hood and locate the throttle body. The actuator is usually attached to it. What you want to check for is any dirt, carbon buildup, or signs of wear. Over time, dirt can cause the actuator to stick or respond slowly, which can confuse the ESC system and make it think something's wrong. If it looks dirty, give it a good clean with throttle body cleaner. Just make sure the car is off and the battery is disconnected before you start. Once it's clean, reconnect everything, start the car, and see if the light goes away. If the ESC light is still on, another thing to consider is that your steering angle sensor might be out of calibration. This sensor tells the car's computer exactly how much you're turning the steering wheel. If it's giving the wrong readings, or if it's just a little out of sync, the ESC system can think you're steering in one direction while the wheels are going another, and that's enough to trigger the warning light. Sometimes this can happen after getting an alignment, replacing suspension parts, or even hitting a big pothole. The good news is, in many cars, you can recalibrate it without replacing anything. Some vehicles let you do it simply by turning the wheel all the way to the left, then all the way to the right, and back to center while the car is on. Others might require a scan tool to reset the calibration. Your owner's manual or a quick check online for your specific make and model will tell you the exact procedure. Once the sensor is properly calibrated, that ESC light should finally stay off, assuming nothing else is wrong. Another reason your ESC warning light might be on is damaged wiring or connectors. The ESC system relies on signals from multiple sensors, wheel speed sensors, steering angle sensor, yaw rate sensor, and more. All of these are connected by wiring, and if any of those wires get damaged, corroded, or loose, the signal can be interrupted. When that happens, the ECU thinks something's wrong with the system and turns the light on. This kind of damage can happen from normal wear and tear, rubbing against suspension parts, rodent damage, or even after hitting debris on the road. If you've recently had work done on your brakes, suspension, or wheels, it's also possible that a connector wasn't plugged back in properly. 
so it's worth visually inspecting the wiring and connectors leading to your ABS sensors, steering angle sensor, and other related components. If you see frayed wires, broken insulation, or corrosion on the connectors, repairing or replacing them could be all it takes to get the ESC system working again. Another thing that can trigger the ESC warning light is low or contaminated brake fluid. Your electronic stability control system relies on your car's braking system to work properly. If the brake fluid is too low, or if it's dirty and contaminated with moisture or debris, the system might not be able to apply the brakes as precisely as it needs to, and that can set off the warning light. Pop open your brake fluid reservoir, usually located on top of the master cylinder in the engine bay, and check the fluid level. If it's below the minimum mark, top it up with the correct type of brake fluid recommended in your owner's manual, 